Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a four corner fixed navigation with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm gonna come over here to pages and then click on add new. Next, we're gonna give the page a name. So in this case, I'm just gonna name this how to create a four corner fixed navigation. Now, before we can go ahead and use the Divi Builder, we want to make sure that we set our templates over here on the right. So make sure you click here where it says page attributes, and then you want to click here where it says template and choose blank page. Now, after you've done that, go ahead now and click on use Divi Builder. Now for this example, we are going to choose a pre-made layout. So I'm gonna go ahead now and select pre-made layout. And then we want to search for the cryptocurrency layout pack. So I'm just gonna add my word here in the search and now we can see all our pages. So the page that we need here is the landing page. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and then click on use this layout. All right, so now that we have our landing page, the next stage now is to add a brand new section so I'm just gonna close this and then scroll all the way down, click on this plus button here to add a new section, click on regular. And what we need here are four columns. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then I'm gonna remove the default padding. So I'm gonna close this and then I'm gonna go into my section settings, design, spacing, and I'm just gonna add a zero both to my top and the bottom. Now, what we need here is when we scroll, we want this section to be above everything else. So in order for us to achieve that, we need to come over here to advanced visibility. And what we need to do is to adjust the Z index. So in this example here, we're just gonna add 10 to that. So when we add all our elements in this section and we start scrolling, you'll notice that this will be above everything else on our page. So pretty much we're done here with the settings. I'm gonna save this. And then next we need to go into our row settings. So again, I'm gonna click on this gear icon, click on design. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to come over here to sizing and fix my gutter width. So I'm gonna say yes to use custom gutter width. And then we're gonna set this to one. Now I've dragged this all the way to one because the gutter width removes the space between the columns. So that's what we've just done here. Next, I'm gonna come over here where it says equalize column heights. I'm gonna say yes to that. And by the way, if you're not sure what all these items are or what they do, all you need to do is to click on this question mark and then it explains what it does. All right, so moving forward, we want to adjust our width. So by default, it's set to 80%. Uh, let's set this to 100%. And then the maximum width as well needs to be set to 100%. Now, this means that our row is going to be pretty much edge to edge. Now for this, we're also going to remove the default padding. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to spacing and I'm gonna set my padding here to zero, both for the top and the bottom. So now it's time to add some modules to our columns. So I'm gonna save this for now and then I'm gonna to scroll to my columns. So I'm gonna click on this plus button and in this column, I'm gonna add an image. So I'm just gonna search for my image module here and select it. So I'm just gonna save this for now. And then in column two, we're going to add a button. And here it is, I'm just gonna select it there. And then I'm just gonna save it. Now in column three, we want to add a social media follow. So I'm gonna click this plus button and then just search the first few letters for social media follow, select it. So I'm just gonna leave these two as defaults. I'm gonna save that as well. And then on the last one, we're going to add a button. So to make things easier for me, I'm just gonna duplicate this one here and then just drag one of them over here to the fourth column. Now for our column one, we need to add a logo in here. So let's go back in and click here on this gear icon, click here on this image, and then search for the logo that we need to use. So as you can see, our layouts come with quite a few logos. So I'm just gonna go with this one here and then upload an image. And then next, I'm gonna come over here to design alignment and make sure it's aligned to the left. Now, what we're going to do now is to add some custom CSS to fix the module's position. So this CSS code can be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Right, so to add our CSS code, we need to come over here to advanced custom CSS and the CSS needs to go in the main element. So I'm gonna paste it in here and then save. 
Now over here in column two, what we need to do is just to style the button. So I'm gonna go in and click here on this gear icon. And here on the button label, I'm just gonna say mine for Bitcoin. And we also need to align this button. So I'm gonna come over here to design alignment, make sure this is aligned to the left. Now let's customize this button. So we're gonna come over here to button. So in order for you to customize your button, you wanna make sure that you activate use custom styles for button. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. So the first thing we're gonna do here is to add my button text color. We're gonna set this to white. And for the button text size, I'm gonna set this to 25. And now for the background, this time, instead of using a solid color, we're gonna use a gradient. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the second tab, click on this plus button, and now we can start adding our colors. And as I mentioned before, if you wanna use the exact same values as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so I'm gonna click here on the first color and I'm gonna paste my color in here. And then I'm gonna also add my second color. Click here and add my second color. All right, so now we have all our colors. Make sure your gradient type is set to linear. And then we're gonna go now to the border radius. So, so I'm just gonna scroll down here to border radius and set this to seven. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're going to make sure show button icon is set to yes. And then we're gonna choose our icon. So here we're gonna choose the traffic cone. So I'm just gonna scroll through here. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And the icon color is going to be white. And there it is. And the icon placement as well needs to be set to right. And then we also need to set our font here. So I'm just gonna scroll back up here until I find my button font. Okay, so I'm just gonna search for my font here. And it's Titillium Web. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. Now, as we did before, we need to add some CSS code to fix the module's position. So I'm gonna come over here to Advanced, Custom CSS, and we are going to add the CSS in the main element. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste it, and then save. Right, so the next stage is to take a look here at the um, social media follow. So again, I'm gonna click on this gear icon to go into my section settings. And uh, now we need to add a few more networks. So I'm gonna click on this plus button, and this time I'm gonna add LinkedIn, and go back. So you can add as many as you want. But for this example, I'm just going to stay with these three. Right, so the next stage is to customize our social media icons. So I'm going to start here with Facebook. And then I'm going to click on design icon and set my color to white. And then I'm also going to activate use custom icon size and set this to 25. And then I'm gonna come back over here to content and in background, I'm gonna make sure I set this to none. So now that we have all the settings for our social media button, uh, to make things easy for me, I'm just gonna copy the styles and paste them onto the other two. So I'm gonna right click, copy item styles, and then I'm gonna right click on this one here and paste item styles, and then do it one more time on LinkedIn. So again, I'm gonna copy item styles and paste. We are also going to add our CSS code. So I'm gonna come over here to advanced custom CSS, main element, I'm gonna paste it in here. And again, this is the CSS to make the module stick to the top corner of the page. Right, so as you can see here on, the, uh, on this column, it's another button. So to save us time, let me just save this for now and then copy all the styles from the button that we have here. So one of the easiest ways I've found to, to do this is to just go into my wireframe mode. And then here's my button. I can just right click, copy module styles, right click over here, paste module styles, and then I'm gonna switch back to my desktop view. Now it's time to change the contents of the button. So again, it's a bit clunky here. I can't really see where I'm clicking. So I'm gonna go back into my in fact, I could just close this and uh, go into the button. But as you can see, it's on top of uh, each other. So I'm gonna go back here into my wireframe mode. Okay, so now I can go into my button settings. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to change my text here, which says click here to read our blog. 
Now, as you can see here, the way things are aligned, this is aligned to the left, which means it's on the top of the button. So this is not ideally what we need. So we need to align this button here to the right. So I'm gonna click here on design alignment and align the button to the right. And then I'm also going to add my CSS code. So I'm gonna come over here to the advanced tab, custom CSS and paste my code in here. So now we can see our button now is over here to the right. So let's take a look at our design. So I'm just gonna save this for now. So I've just saved the page and you can see here, we have our logo here on the top left. We also have our buttons here on the bottom and we have our social media icons. But as you can see here, things don't look very clear because uh, our buttons here are way close to the edges. So what we need to do is to go in and uh, adjust these a little bit. So let's go back into our visual builder. So again, I have to go into each and every one of these modules. So I'm gonna click here on the expand settings, click on wireframe view. So I'm gonna start here with the logo. So I'm gonna click on this gear icon, advanced, custom CSS, and then I'm gonna replace this CSS code. I'm gonna save that, move on to the next one. So for module two, click on advanced, custom CSS. So as you can see, my CSS code here is actually adding some padding both to the left, I mean to the bottom and the left to give our design a bit of breathing space. So again, I'm gonna paste it in here, save that, go to my social media follow, add my CSS code, I'm gonna overwrite this. And then finally, I'm gonna go into the button here, click on advanced, custom CSS, and then I'm gonna paste my CSS code in here. All right, so let's save and do a quick preview of our design. So I'm gonna save here, exit the Visual Builder. And now you can see that our buttons here have some breathing space. In fact, in order for us to see this even better is to actually exit this Visual Builder. So I'm gonna come over here and log out. And now we can see our final design. So when I scroll here, you can see that all my elements are stuck on the actual page. And if I need to navigate away from this, I can just click here on this button and this will take me to wherever I need to go. And same applies here with this button here to read our blog. And on the top here, we can also go to our social media buttons. But the most important thing here is my design. As I'm scrolling through this, all my buttons here and all my elements are on top of my scroll. So I think this is a really cool design. Go ahead and try it out. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.